Cool. Chris Marley here. I'm going to talk to you today about our studio setup, where we came from, um, our humble beginnings in pornography, and just kind of starting out with absolutely no equipment and what you can do and how we had to get creative and then go into talking about the equipment that we have now and give you a behind the scenes tour of our studio, which is now it's pretty technical and, and pretty, um, pretty advanced, I'd say, as far as uh, homemade porn production. So uh, first of all, starting out, we had no equipment. We got our first, what would you say, like 2 million views? Five. Five million views. Five, first nothing five million. But an iPhone and some sheets and uh roll a tape roll a tape and a down <laughs> comforter and a ceiling fan um we started out in our living room we pushed all the furniture aside we had a wood floor and we laid out um a down comforter and white sheets and white pillows from costco and uh waited for the sun to set so that we had some good lighting and as it was setting it came through a large glass sliding door on the front of our house and to soften the light we hung a white bed sheet over that window and that created a kind of a soft filtered uh, light effect and we used that um, along with a cell phone just a regular iphone uh, taped to the ceiling fan in the room facing downwards so our first popular video um, it was an overhead shot that was just a cell phone taped to the ceiling and recording us lying on the floor and there was nothing else to it and people could see that our hearts were in it it was different it captured their attention and it captured their hearts and that was worth millions of views and it's something that you can definitely do without any equipment or anything special it's just an iphone xr recording in uh, probably 4k so there you go um, after that we graduated to kind of we realized this was going to be a, a big deal. It was worth investing some money into. And so we dedicated a room, or I should say a corner of a room in our <laughs> house uh, as a studio. And we hung up black velvet curtains um, on the walls, on two of the walls, so that you had a black background. And velvet is important because it doesn't reflect light. So we got this pitch black background. Um, we wanted to have two consistent cameras. And so I did a bunch of research and let me grab a camera here. <clears throat> we landed on uh, this Redmi Note 9S, uh, which is an Android cell phone that can record in 4K and you can get it for less than $300 US. Um, so we got two of those and we had two 4K cameras that we put on tripods and we used this for another, I don't know, 15 million views. Yeah, um, we use those for a lot of videos. Now, one thing that is important is that when we moved to these, we did start using DaVinci Resolve, which is photo editing or video editing uh, software. And it's completely free. The free version is all we've used until actually this week. We upgraded to the paid version just because it's faster, basically. Um, but Kate's always been just an incredible editor and she was able to take these shots and turn it into something really beautiful. We experimented with some other things like GoPros and whatever, but um, we ended up landing on the, the Redmi. We returned the GoPros. Uh, these just gave us the look that we were looking for, and they were super simple to use. Uh, we used a piece of software on them, an app called OpenCam, and it allowed us to kind of set manual white balance. Uh, that was really important. Um, the other thing that we did when we graduated to cell, like dedicated cell phones instead of our iPhones, was we invested in uh, this lighting. So these LED lights, um, it's just all you get when you buy it is this light panel without the soft box. And it allows you to change the white balance and the brightness. And we got three of these for, I think it was like $200, and $200 roughly. For three of those, they included the tripods. Um, we added the soft boxes at a later date just to give a little bit softer light. Um, but we tried 
some different products from different companies and this had the highest color rendering index which simply put just means that it put it gives really accurate uh, color reproduction in video at a very low cost um, so these viltrox vil trox lights were totally instrumental in creating our first videos how many of them do we have three you get three in a, we got three in a pack yeah and then we got these um d fuse uh they're not made for this light but they happen to fit it and i think these run 30 or 40 bucks a piece and they really soften up the light and give a much our, our videos are very soft and warm and so a harsh light didn't really do a whole lot for us um, so up until that point probably 20 million views in probably half of where we are now was all recorded on a wood floor with just sheets on the floor and black velvet curtains behind um, and actually until we moved to Wyoming we didn't have a bed or anything soft to record on we were really just on the floor and it wasn't always very comfortable and sometimes we'd like bump around but um, <laughs> The other thing that we did in the beginning is we had a Blue Yeti microphone just to increase the sound quality. Thank you. Uh, Blue Yeti microphone, just a pretty cheap mic that's very common for podcasters starting out. And we plugged it into a tablet. We had an extra Android tablet and we had it just record. And then um, Kate was able to sync up the sound recorded on that tablet to the phones so you can see how this is kind of becoming a graduation of becoming more technical if you tried to start out with what we have now it would be so overwhelming and confusing that it would look terrible it would sound terrible and it would be really frustrating even if you had kate walking you through it it would be really frustrating to try to start where we are now so i don't recommend that um okay so fast forward so we moved to Wyoming and we get to set up a dedicated studio and we get to do some shopping and um, some of these things might have happened a little bit before that. So the video quality kind of incrementally increased, um, but just to simplify things, I'll talk about it all at once. So I'm going to come over and show you the really good light that we invested in. Um, this is a Pixel Photoville C150 and it's 150 watt. LED studio light. They're very inexpensive by comparison to professional studio lights. I think this is like $400. Um, the one downside to it is that the noise, when you read reviews, the noise from the fan is distracting. You could hear after we got this light and some of those videos, kind of a whirring sound that would turn on and off throughout the video. Um, so what I did was remove the internal fan and uh, cut some holes in the bottom and top of the casing and then bought these uh, Noctua is the brand N-O-C-T-U-A computer fans they've been instrumental in our setup they're silent computer fans I bought two of them and put one on the top and the bottom to make up for the lower airflow and then I was able to wire them into the existing um, the existing circuitry in this light. But if you're not into that, I can show you another solution um, that we actually had to use on our cameras. This wide uh, diffuser and grid is also very important for giving, um, giving an even distribution of light across the entire bed. So we originally bought the uh, C100, which is the 100 watt version of this. Uh, this is the 150, and we found that that just hit us. wasn't quite bright enough. Um, so we upgraded, and then we have the C100 for doing, like, you can show Gussie. He's cute. <laughs> I guess. Hi, Bea. If you ever hear, He's like, not a interested. <laughs> and a thud in the middle of our videos, it's probably Gus outside the door, like, trying to get in. And, There's uh, a video or two where he's barged in. <laughs> yeah, he tries to barge in, and we start laughing. Um, and then to avoid, we used to have tripods everywhere. 
which is really frustrating to try to step around and like you're literally we're crawling under this and stuff um we got these wall mounted uh boom arms they're called they're made by a company called Neewer, n-e-e-w-e-r and we got them on amazon i believe they're available worldwide all of this should be available worldwide and that just allowed us to take things off the floor and make it a lot easier to navigate around the studio they're infinitely adjustable so this can go up and down and um, spin and that's just been really important to us so let's go to cameras um, da, da, da. so we use three Sony A6400 cameras. Uh, I chose this model because it has exemplary video quality. It records in 4K and the screen pops up so that we can see what we're doing. Uh, when we were using the cell phones, we couldn't see what we were doing because the screen faced away from us. And we'd find out after videos that we were like a little off, we were off center or part of us was out of the frame. Heads were cut off. Heads were cut off. Yeah, and that was frustrating. And Kate had to get really creative in order to make those look good. Some of them we couldn't use. So this is really important for us to be able to glance up and see that we're in the right spot um, for whatever. We have three different lenses that we use on these cameras. Um, we switch them between cameras depending on the shot we're looking for. So this is a Sigma 30 millimeter uh, 1.4 and this is basically like a 2x zoom lens and this allows us to get close-up shots. So if there's a camera that we want to, or an angle that we want to get a close-up shot from, uh, right now these are all set up for the strap-on video where we had a close-up of the um, strap-on going in and out of my ass that Kate was wearing. And so like this was the side close up. Um, so we use that 2X. The one downside to these cameras that we found after we bought them is they overheat. Uh, if you record for more than about 20 minutes, depending on the temperature in the room, maybe 30. And so I use these same um, Noctua silent computer fans. And it's just hanging here by a piece of wire and just that little bit of airflow blowing up on the camera is enough to keep it from overheating for, I think, up to about an hour and a half. Um, since these are meant to plug into a computer and the cameras don't have built-in wiring for a fan like the uh, Pixel lighting does, I wired the, um, the fans to a just a 12-volt DC power adapter that you can see here. And these are really cheap. I got a few of these on Amazon. And so, as you can see, like this is really built up. Um, this is really built up technically from where we started just to get incremental increases in video quality. Um, so that covers one of the lenses. All of the cameras are mounted on boom arms, which is really nice because you have this flexibility to move it up and down, and side to side and in and out. Um, and there's really nothing to trip over for working in the room. We can kind of move them all out of the way. So huge fan of that. Um, we hardwired all of our cameras to power so that we don't have issues with batteries. Um, any camera that you buy that has a removable battery, any professional one, uh, you should be able to buy plug-in power adapters for them. And I highly recommend that because I would hate to deal with batteries. <clears throat> okay, so I'm about to give up on that. Um, <laughs> okay, audio. Actually, let's talk about the rest of the lenses first. So that was the uh, 30 millimeter lens. That's like a, a 2X. Um, this lens is typically not in our overhead shots. Usually in our overhead shots, we use a wide angle. This is made by uh, Rokinon. Um, you can get a shot of that. And this is basically a fisheye lens. It's a, um, is it 16? Am I remembering that right? Let's see on the inside. Yeah, 12 millimeter. So this is really a wide angle lens. And the reason that we do that is that our signature shot, 
uh, was always an overhead that gave you a view of the entire play area, which in this case is a bed before it was just on the floor. Um, so this gives you that, that view. It's manual focus, um, manual aperture, manual everything. And that's nice because then you don't have to refocus the lens every time. If you're doing a similar shot, the camera's in the same place. All of our other lenses require us to refocus, which I'm not a huge fan of. So this one allows us to get that wide angle shot when the camera is pushed up against the ceiling. It's perfect and it covers the entire bed. Um, my favorite lens for these cameras and basically everybody's favorite lens for this camera is the uh, Sigma 16 millimeter 1.4. It lets in a ton of light. It is uh, just, a, just a beautifully made lens and it's kind of the general lens that's usually on two cameras unless we need the zoom lens. Uh, the reason that this is down a little lower right now is again for the strap on video and it had this closer lens on it and that allowed us to really get in, um, get an angle really close to my butt and get the action down there. So that was really hot. Um, so yeah. And then for audio, we actually invested a lot in our microphone because we really wanted to have crisp, clear audio that didn't capture stuff around us. It didn't capture the outdoors. That's also the reason we're in a basement is because it's really difficult to edit out a truck going by or a siren without also editing out your voices and the sounds of sex, which we want to keep as much as possible. So this is a Rode NTG4 Plus and it is battery powered, so you don't need a microphone amplifier. It's a shotgun microphone, which means that um, it's going to capture what's in front of it and it's going to capture very little of what's on the sides of it. So that really limits the sound capture to the bed plate area. Um, and that's, we don't need to get, we're not musicians or anything, so we don't have like a separate uh, mic amplifier and audio processing equipment. We just do that in DaVinci. Uh, but we have the microphone plugged into the camera and we just capture uh, mono audio, which means that it's just one channel. So it's not stereo. If we wanted to get serious about this, we could get another one and have it, you know, covering two sides of the bed. Not if we wanted to get serious about it, but if we wanted to have stereo sound and we wanted you to hear this end of the bed in your left ear and this end in your right ear, we get two of these microphones. Um, so far we haven't thought that was worth, these microphones are like $400. So we haven't thought that it was worth the investment to get two of those. Um, as you can see, we've invested quite a bit into this setup at this point. Uh, in this studio, since we have a dedicated room, we've painted the walls in pure matte white. So that means low reflectivity, no paint mixing. We went to the hardware store and we bought big, five gallon bucket of regular white matte paint. And that's what you see on all of the walls. Um, some of the edging isn't quite done because you don't see it in the videos. And so <laughs> we just had other higher pri priorities. It's laughing. Um, so yeah, that's our setup. You want to talk about the bed? Yeah, the furniture. Where's our furniture and stuff from? Where's the furniture from? This is our bed set up. The nightstands are, we just got everything off of Amazon, right? Yeah, it's all off of Amazon. Um, I don't know the brands off the top of my head, but if you go on Amazon, like this is all popular stuff. It's not, it's not rare or, or weird or anything. The bedding is all um, pure white as well. We really wanted everything to be very low key and we wanted it to be uh, not distracting. The carpet in here when we moved in was brown. And so we recarpeted so that the color of the carpet wouldn't interfere with the white balance of the lights. Um, it's really important to have all of your lights a matching white balance and not to have any light bulbs that are different. Like if you have to use, um, if you don't have professional lights, it's really important just to use sunlight coming through a window and record when it's bright in the room and play around with angles so that you can reduce shadows. You really do not want to mix uh, white balances. And we tried that at first. We've done a lot of experimentation 
And mixing That's white like, balances is just a bad idea. You mean like warm lights, colors for, with blue light colors yeah. and like different shades of light? White balance is like when you buy a light bulb, you can get like 3,500K or 5,500K. 5, soft white, is warm. Generally, uh, daylight and it looks blue. And then soft white is like 3,500K and that looks yellow. And if you have one of one and one of the other, and you can't set your cameras manually and you end up with some wonky colors and you just don't get the color depth because when you turn up the colors then you just see blue and yellow and it doesn't look right um, so it's really important to set your white balance in your camera manually and that's why we used open cam on those androids when we started out um, he's so cute <laughs> Uh, so that we can set the white balance manually and then in editing you can enrich and saturate the colors without having it screwed up by different different types of lights we also have our curtains are blackout so that they aren't letting in any even though we're in the basement they still let in some sun so they are blackout also so that they don't let in the sunlight in the evenings yeah so if you don't have professional lights, you definitely want to let in as much light as possible. If you invest like we have in a lot of different lighting and equipment, then you want to have full control over it and you want to block out all of the uh, natural light and just have, just have artificial lights. So that's it. That's how we went from a simple iPhone XR taped to a ceiling fan to a studio setup that is um, you know probably two or three thousand dollars it's still very simple and very low end and very I would say frugal it's, it's mostly very frugal um, compared to what a professional studio might use their cameras would cost three or four thousand dollars a piece more than all of our lights and all of our cameras and all of our lenses combined um, but this is the balance that we've struck to get the best audio quality and video quality uh, without spending a fortune on it. Thank you for recording, Kate. I appreciate it. You're welcome.